Hi, I'm Ernie. And I'm Ben. And this is Budget Nerds. You are not alone. Budget Nerds is a show about getting nerdy about your budget. And it's been a lot of fun as we've launched the first two episodes, this being the third. I don't want to say much more about that because we have a lot to talk about today, Ben. We're talking about categories. (laughs) But I think I should say first off, we both have YNAB shirts on. Yeah. We didn't Ew. coordinate this. How <laughs> I just felt nerdy... like a day for a white app shirt. <laughs> yeah. And how nerdy is that? Yes. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, we're, again, we're going to be talking about categories. We've had a lot of requests. People saying, hey, let's, you know, can you talk about categories? Can you break down your own personal categories? And so it's a super nerdy topic. So let's dive mm-hmm. into it. And it might be really helpful. You know, listening to how you structure your budget, how I structure my budget, it might really help other people out there, budget nerds, structure their own budget. So why don't you take it away, Ben? All right. Yeah. So uh, we're just going to talk about my categories because we don't have time to talk about both of ours because we, you know, we're going to get into the nitty gritty here. Um, Um, But let's first talk about like the overall structure. I actually use, uh, pretty much use the default structure that comes with. Uh, when you first start your budget. So meet and obligations, true expenses, uh, you know, quality of life just for fun. And then I have some added stuff in there too. Uh, do you do that, Ernie? Do you stick with the default as far as your structure or I do did. you change it up? I did when I yeah. started. Actually, I didn't. I think I changed my, my, my groups right away. Then I went back to the defaults. And since mm. then I've changed them. Yeah, yeah. And I've, I've kind of gone back and forth over the years too, but... I, I like it. it. It works for me. But, you know, of course, you can do whatever you want. And then, like, let's talk about some specific things. And I think one of the big questions a lot of people have is whether they should um, combine categories as much as they can uh, or try to separate it out. Like, for example, for, like, fixed bills, like bills that are the same every single month, uh, they don't change at all, Uh you know, things like the internet bill or the phone bill, things like that. Yep. Um, I actually combine those all into one category that I called fixed bills. Okay. And uh, so I got I got my life insurance, a couple other insurance things, bills there, uh, a phone bill, internet bill, and a recycling bill all in one. And I, I just kind of love this category because it just... It's so efficient, you know? Interesting, because I, and I won't get into too much, because I'll talk in the next episode about my specific uh, category structure, but I don't combine those. I bre- I like breaking mm. them out. Yeah. And it, it's, I do lose some reporting stuff, because I can't, like, I can't see, like, a trend line for each separate one, but I feel like I don't really need the reporting separate for those, because they're always the same, and if I wanted to make a change, I would just look at the one individual thing. And I do keep a note, like in the on the category with the with the costs for each one. Oh, so sure. So you I still know how much plans. each bill is. Okay. Yeah, so I can always look it up that way. But I, another thing I combine too is subscriptions, which is another thing a lot of folks struggle with uh, because we got a lot of subscriptions these days. A lot of monthly subscriptions, a lot of annual subscriptions. Maybe you got your YNAB subscription too. So I actually combine those as well. Uh, and that one is even cooler to me because that's that's 13 potential categories because I have 13 separate Jeez. subscriptions. <laughs> I got a lot of those. <laughs> and uh, so what I do is I actually have all my yearly subscriptions and all my monthly subscriptions in one category. So some of the money that I budget every month gets used right away for like monthly subscriptions like Netflix. And we actually have Netflix, Hulu and Disney Plus kind of a lot but <laughs> but um so some of that gets used right away because it's monthly and then the rest rolls over and that way i have money for um any yearly subscriptions that that come up okay uh, do you ever run out the, of money because you're yeah you, you have the monthly and then you also have the yearly that's that's the thing you kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit okay. uh when, when you first if, if you want to combine your yearly subscriptions it is important to kind of front load the money, uh, uh, front load the category with some money right when you start, because you you could, you could create that category and have no money in it. And yeah, it'd be fine to have, you know, some subscriptions that, you know, you have time to build up, but you might have a subscription that's due next month. So you have to think about that. So that's what I did. I created a category for yearly subscriptions pieces before I actually combined it with monthly and I gave it some money to start. And then from then on, I just 
took the total amount of my yearly subscriptions, divided it by 12, and that's what I funded every month. And it never had a problem. It just keeps rolling. There's always money available. So okay. kind of have a little wiggle room in that category in case, uh, you know, just to just be sure you have enough at all wow. times. Wow. So 13 categories into one. That's impressive. What else you got for yeah. us? I've got, I've got six monthly categories and seven yearly categories or yearly subscriptions okay. in there. All right. So yeah, let's talk about some of the things. Oh, this is kind of fun. Um, my, I have an interesting name for my emergency fund because I have an emergency fund category. I actually call it my prudent reserve. And this uh-huh. is something that uh, you all out there taught me or the, the white up community taught me because I was teaching a workshop and uh, somebody um, uh, asked me, uh, asked me a question about their prudent reserve. And I was like, prudent reserve. I was like, what's that? I, have, I, I told them, I, I said, I never heard that term before. And they said, Oh, you might call it an emergency fund. And I was just like, prudent reserve. It just, it's just a beautiful phrase. I just, it, it's, it's nice. I like the word like prudent. Like it just makes me feel like I'm taking care of things. I don't know. It was nice. I liked the category name. So I, that's what I call it. Prudent awesome. reserve. You might try to call it that. <laughs> uh, and it might be really common in some other uh, countries. Cause I think the guy, that I think he was from India, um, who mentioned it. So maybe it's really common in India. I don't know. I, I have I have a, an example of one anyway. <laughs> so uh, that that maybe it's common where you are to call it that, but not common for me. Um, another thing that I have, I'm looking at my budget over here right right now. Uh, I have a whole category group for my nanny because we have a babysitter who comes in because uh, my both of my wife and I work. Um, but so we have a babysitter come in and watch the kids. Uh, and so she's our employee. So that means we need to do all the tax stuff for her. So we have to, um, pay employer taxes like social security for her and stuff like that. We have to have withholding. So I have to have a category like where some of her pay is withheld to pay her taxes. That's interesting. All that stuff. So yeah, so I have a whole category group for that. Um, and that's, that's probably something really unusual. Um, and basically yeah, that's I have, something like, I've never heard of. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a big thing. Like if you ever have, you know, instead of doing childcare, if you have an employee come and help take care of your kids, you got to think about taxes and all that. So we actually have a service that helps us with it. It's really nice. Uh, should we talk about my killer emoji game? Because all my categories, almost all of them. So you shared your budget <laughs> with me or a fresh start of it. And your, yeah. your emoji game is killer. I will vouch <laughs> for that. <laughs> I have a lot of fun with it. My fixed bills category is probably one of my favorites because I've got like a little skull for my life. Basically, there's like five different emojis or six different emojis there to indicate all the bills that are under that one category. I got like a little skull for life insurance because it's really death insurance, right? There was <laughs> like the a toilet emoji and... on there. <laughs> The yeah, poop emoji. Heard. The poop emoji for kids stuff because yep. we buy diapers, right? <laughs> so the poop emoji works. Um, yeah. Oh, my car insurance is my favorite because I got yeah, it's on the screen now. I got you know two cars with like a explosion in between them because it's car insurance, right? If you run yeah. into your car, that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> or I love my retirement one. There's like two old people, and it's just I don't know. It's just kind of it's just kind of sweet to me. There's like an old woman and old man. So I don't know. Yeah, it's I mean, nice. hats off. It, you did an amazing <laughs> job with those emojis. I cannot do emojis. I Not tried. Like, I remember the night vividly. I was laying in bed, getting ready to fall asleep. I pull out my phone mm-hmm. and I start adding emojis to all my categories. And then I get uh-huh. halfway through and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, it's it just not an Ernie thing. <laughs> it didn't feel right. And so I went back, I deleted all the emojis, and now it's just a plain old boring budget. to just text. <laughs> But that works fine. for me. I mean, some people don't want all this stuff in their in their budget, so you know. But it's weird. I look at your budget. And I'm like, whoa, that's awesome! Like those. I like the colorfulness. You know, it's fun. But it's not it's not necessary. You know, it's yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, I just can't do it with mine. I don't know. Yeah, the, the only other unusual category thing I wanted to talk about was. Um, my budget meeting items category group. We talked about this a little bit in yeah, the first you episode. This. Yeah, because basically these are holding categories for uh, kind of like special income. So uh, like budget meeting items or if we get any special money, like money from uh, Katie's, my Kate, my wife, Katie, we got money from her grandma for my daughter's birthday, for example. Not sure what to do with it. We need to talk about it, but we want we don't want to lose those $40 in the budget. So I uh, put that in budget meeting items category. 
So it's there, and then we can talk about it. Same thing with our margin, which we talked about last week. Um, and then if we get any bonuses, I actually have a category called bonuses. That That's a holding category for income. That's that's a bonus. If we ever get that, uh, then I put the money there just so we can talk about it. So, yeah, we have a whole category group, just uh, a place to park money until we can have a budget meeting and talk about it. So okay. that's very cool. That's, that's another thing. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of everything I think you might consider interesting or not <laughs> in yeah, my, my budget. That's awesome. Okay. So I, I have a question. When was the last time you changed your categories up? I mean, are you, oh, maybe yeah. a better question is, are you constantly tweaking categories, combining them, separating them out? You know, not so much anymore. I mean, for the first, probably first couple of years, I do that a lot. Um, but now it's, it's pretty set. And sometimes I almost think like, maybe I should blow it up and start over because maybe we're a little set in our ways. You know what I mean? Uh, but it, it is pretty, we, we've, we've dialed it down and we figured out the true expenses a lot that we need. And um, yeah, it's pretty set. Sometimes we'll add a category, like we added a new roof category recently because uh, somebody came and told us that our roof was going to fall in in five years so we need to start saving for it yeah. so you know th good. things like that right you know so, so sometimes you know things will be added and, or taken away but um for the most part we're pretty set but maybe i don't know maybe one day i'll wake up and say i want to flip the table and change it i don't know we'll see okay but, <laughs> so yeah. we often talk here at ynab about you know that balance when it comes to categories between simplicity and awareness Mm -hmm. Which end of the spectrum do you lean towards with your categories? I mean, I, I'm I'm probably a little more complex than most. Okay. Although I say that, I, I it depends. I mean, you know, it depends on the person. But um, yeah, I, I I do like to dial it in um, and have some really specific categories. I'm trying to think of an example. Oh, a good example is I do separate out groceries from like household goods. So when I go to the grocery store and I buy toilet paper and I also buy food i do need to do a split transaction for that it just makes sense to me but usually when we're talking to new folks we tell them just to combine those to keep it simple so really you know it's up to you yeah there are a, a lot example. of wine numbers that combine the household and the groceries and i i don't get how they do it so if, that, <laughs> if that's you like how do you do that i just i i I couldn't. I like knowing I know, the differences. I feel like I can't handle it. And plus, adding split transactions is fun. I mean, we're nerds, right? So Absolutely. <laughs> I don't mind the split transactions. But some people hate it. Like, they're like, I don't want to ever have to do a split transaction. And so they set up their categories that way. But then on the other hand, I'm, I, I combine a lot of categories like the fixed bills and the subscriptions where I could separate those out. So I do try to, you know, make things a little simpler where I can. But, okay. But yeah, so I'm kind of in the middle, I think. You know, not too far one way or the other. Okay. But I guess we'll hear about your categories next week. Yeah, next, we'll dive uh, into my next category episode. next episode. But thanks, Ben. This has been really, really nerdy getting into your yeah. categories. And I hope it's been it's fun. You know, fun and also maybe enlightening for some other people as they're thinking through what they want their category structure to be like. Yeah. And I just say, you know, don't feel like you need to um, structure your budget based on anybody else at all, but what you want, uh, that's really important. It's your life it's, it should be your budget. Absolutely. All right. Well, let us know in the comments what you think or how you structure your budget. And, uh, we'll talk back at you next episode. Happy budgeting fun. everybody. Happy budgeting. <laughs>